Okay, I'm going to present another extension for Genially, which in this case is LockyVar, which works with another website, namely Locky. So I'm going to show quickly what a Locky lock is, and then I'm going to show how to use it in Genially and how to use it with this extension. Locky is a website where you can generate different types of locks, which you can then embed in your website. So for example, Genially. So um, there is a French version, an English version and a Spanish version. So we'll go to the English version down here. You can also do it if you go straight to en.locky.fr and then you get to the uh, English version. So you need to have an account for this. Um, in this case, I just uh, sign in. Okay, so if I want to create a new one, I go to create new, I give it a name and then I've got a great choice of different ones I can do. So I could have um, a digital lock, so basically like a number lock. Um, I love having the color one, which is quite cool. So you can choose different colors here. You can even have a musical keyboard where you have to play the f um, a certain melody or you could have switches. So that looks like this, here we go. So they need to switch a certain a, th a certain pattern basically. Okay, so let's go with a simple digital number lock for now. Uh, you could also have a password or uh, lots of different options. So let's say our code is just one, two, three. Okay, so down here you can see the code you've chosen and then we go to the next bit. Now it's asking us what you want to happen um, when it opens. So if you're not using the locky var um, extension from Scape, then you could just show anything else. So you, you don't need to use it with the extension. You could just maybe uh, display a text that says the, the password for the next page is this and this. And then they uh, you can just use the built-in password uh, in Genially, so for example. As you can see, you can also have an image, you can have a video, so it could play a YouTube video, or you can link to another website, which is the option we will need later uh, to use our Lockiva extension. Maybe I just quickly show what it looks like without it. So here's a text. So let's say we want to say, well done, uh, you win. If this is our last lock and then we say, okay. And now it's giving us this iframe down here. So we can insert this. Let's say we want it here. So we go to insert, then other, and then we paste it in here, insert. And then it puts it on our page so we can make it a bit bigger so we can see it. Here we go. Okay, so our code was one, two, three, tick. And now it's just showing us that text we put in. Okay, so that's the simple version. Now, if you want to use it as an extension, then it looks like this. So in this case here, I've got a, a color code and my code is just red, orange, yellow. And when I click OK, there are three things that will happen now. Okay, so the first thing that has happened is the lock has disappeared and instead I can see this little new window here. And this is actually a preview, so to speak, of another page, which I'll show you in a minute. The second thing that has happened is that the thumb has appeared and a forward button. So for example, in this case, I could put in a link that only if I open that lock, then I can go to the next page. Another thing that has um, happened is that the hint down here, the phone, which said the combination is red, orange, yellow, has disappeared. I don't need to use all three of them. I do have to have the preview window and I do need to have something uh, appear, I think. Now I can show you that in my presentation, I've got actually this rewards page. So this is the page that we saw earlier when we got rid of the locky. So if I put in the, um, the navigation in this presentation again, um, so at the moment it's on microsite, but if I put it on standard, then you can see what's going on here. So if I do this again, red, orange, yellow here, so you can now see that this is actually a little page in there. So I can even go to the next page or the page before, uh, which in this case actually takes me to the back to the page that I'm on at the moment. So we kind of have a page in a page. If you don't want anything to be visible in here, 
really the only option is to just have this page completely blank or completely um, covered up. So for example, instead of this GIF here, ah, let's do this again. Instead of this GIF here, we could just have a big gray area. So it just, it will just look as if the lock has disappeared basically. So if we do this again, we got red, orange, yellow. Okay, so all I get now is this gray box. Okay, and obviously if, if it was the same color as my background, then the player wouldn't really realize that there is anything at all. But the important thing is that the thumb has appeared. This time the thumb was already there and that's because I didn't go past my first slide. So I've got this box here, which um, is the delete button. So only if I start from this slide, which has the delete button on it, will it reset any lock that in my presentation. Otherwise it will always still be there, whatever I've, um, I've made up here. Okay, I'm going to show how you now create a page like this. So first of all, you will need to download this template here um, and the templates uh, in for us always have bl blue background so you can easily recognize them when you reuse this presentation. Okay, so here I've got all my elements and it's important that I decide on the name of my lock. So uh, especially if you're using several locky locks in your presentation, if you just have one, you might as well just keep the name, which at the moment is just locky var because it is already grouped with all my elements. So the red box, the purple box and the green box all need to be grouped with a text box, which has the name of the lock. So here or locky var, if I wanted to change it to a different one, I could just call it digital. Let's say in my presentation, I've got a digital lock and a color lock. So to make sure that I know what's what, I change them all to digital. And then later on, I could just duplicate them all for my second lock and change the name. Okay, so now we've got those three elements. Now I need to have at least three pages. The red element, I need to copy and paste onto my title page. So this needs to be a page that all the players come past on the way to the lock. As I said before, this deletes any progress that has been made and kind of resets the locky uh, effect. So this is just in the background. If you look at it in uh, preview mode, you won't be able to see it or in, in presentation mode, you won't be able to see this element. So it's just in the background there. Okay, so for our game page, we need the purple element, the green box and the red box. So we take all them and put them on our game page. So the game page is the one that has the lock on it. So the purple box, we just stick in the corner. The green and the red, you don't need to use both of them. You just need to use one of the two. So green gets grouped with a picture that will appear when the answer is right. And red is the one that will disappear if the answer is right. So it could, for example, be something that covers up a secret uh, compartment. And um, the objects that are grouped with these boxes, you can have several objects. So in this case, we've got a picture of a hand and also this forward button and the whole thing then has a link to the next page. So I can only get to the next page if I've opened the lock. Good. Then we need to also create our locky, but we'll come to that because for that we need the um, reward page, so to speak. So that is the one that shows instead of the lock. So let me get rid of this picture, it's a bit distracting. And on this page, we need this green text box and the black text box. So these two elements need to be on there and stay on there. The red one with the code here, with the, the web link in it, this is to get the, the code for this specific page. So normally in Genially, um, when you get the link, you can only get the link to the whole presentation. So only from the beginning. But this is another extension from Scape, which is called page reference, which allows you to get the link for this specific page. And that's what we need. So. How you get it is you just copy this red box onto the page, go into preview mode. Now we copy this address. We can try it out. So if I put this in my web browser here, it should take me to that 
reward page. Yes, so that has worked. Now that I've got it, I can just delete this. I don't need it anymore. Because now I need to go back to Loki and edit it. So in this case, I want um, the reward to be a web page and it needs to be that reward web page. So don't put the link to your whole Genie presentation, but the one from the, the specific reward slide. Otherwise it won't work. Okay, so now I can take the iframe here, go back onto my game page. I'll take this out, um, go to insert and paste in a new bit. Okay, so now we've inserted our lock here. We can make it bigger again. And when you go in preview mode, then hopefully this will um, disappear. And instead I will see the reward page and my object will appear here. So as I said, you could have several locks in the same presentation. I'm not sure it will work with the several locks on one page. So that probably doesn't work, but you can have several objects appearing. So you can duplicate um, the green box. So you could have uh, several things appearing at the same time and several things disappearing at the same time.